That's how a, a woman, once uh, empowered with the right kind of skills and supported with the right kind of positive uh, attitudes from her, not just her uh, female family members, her male family members, is able to own a business. So she's moved from a micro-entrepreneur to an entrepreneur and uh, has overcome those barriers, is now uh, the HR manager of an of industry that has both men and women employees. So that's uh, truly dynamic, but that support continues. Uh, she needs that support continuously, not just from her homes, but the government also has to discriminate positively towards her, that if she applies for a loan, she should be positively discriminated towards, that uh, she can then expand on that business. And uh, the market, does not positively discriminate. The market has its own logic. And for that, I would really like to see how Aisha and her, uh, the women who are working with her under the micro-entrepreneurship uh, program, how are they uh, facing these challenges? Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to share with you, um, USAID uh, is supporting entrepreneurs in implementing a very innovative value chain project, which looks at how women micro-entrepreneurs can access markets in different subsectors. So for instance, in the subsector of embellishment, we know our village women can do embroidery. And what the value chain approach does is it talks about what are the constraints that are not letting these women embellishers in villages uh, that are cut off from markets, how can they access markets and how can they become a sustainable part of the market? And it's highly innovative, why? Because it just doesn't look at these women embellishers in isolation. It looks at them as part of a larger supply chain. It looks at them as saying, what can we do so that this woman embellisher can now will be able to take action to be able to be linked up to a retailer in the Lahore market, a wholesaler in the Karachi market, or possibly even export markets. Yes. So this is one initiative that is going to be very successful. And I think uh, getting women micro entrepreneurs to be able to become part of the formal economy, which is missing right now. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. I uh, can remember the many instances when I've shopped in the US and I've seen uh, Bangladesh tags and Nepal tags and India tags, and I've only seen tags of uh, Pakistan on towels. So definitely what we produce uh, with uh, the wonderful skills of women has to be showcased uh, and has to reach the export market. And how would you uh, think that uh, that can be supported, uh, Marilyn? Well, we are actually already supporting um, women micro-enterprises in this way. USAID does have a program that's helping women link up with international buyers who are looking for their projects, um, helping them to uh, market their, their products more effectively and uh, develop the kinds of products that, that international buyers are, are interested in. We're talking about micro enterprises, which means that there are many people doing it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, one step in the future that I that I'm sure that uh, NGOs will be taking and, and donors as well is to help the women micro uh, enterprisers link together in networks mm -hmm. um, because there's strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. They can, you know, on a village level, on a district level, they can, you know, solve some of these logistic problems. They can uh, together perhaps form cooperatives and reach out to buyers and so forth. So there's a lot of development of sort of um, structural relationships that I think will help the, the small uh, and micro enterprisers a lot. That's really interesting. Structural is a direct indicator to what the government can do. See me as one of the uh, powerful uh, networks that Aurat Foundation has cultivated over the years throughout Pakistan. How do you think Aurat Foundation can still push for a strong structural change to, uh, to work with the micro-entrepreneurs? Uh, well, through, through the gender equity program, one of the four objectives is to work towards economic empowerment of women. And uh, just before this program started, Marilyn and I were talking about how we can showcase and bring to quality and to export quality uh, some of the many exciting uh, traditions we have here, and uh, which is being uh, encouraged through programs like this one to you know, help women come out of their shell, basically. At the same time, you know, a number of other things need to be in place. Uh, there, are, there are some steps that need to be taken in the economic sphere as a whole. You know, better policies, uh, you know, Pakistan loses out a lot on international trade. Mm -hmm. How can we work at that level? 
and you know how we can bring lobbying pressure on other countries that while we are opening our markets to them, they have to open their markets to us. I know that to export even some of our textile goods, we have to go by other countries because there's such small quotas for Pakistan. So you know those are some policy things that government needs to work on in a big way. Then you know we have to have the right laws in place. You know Pakistan's constitution says that women are equal, and that also we take special steps. You know where are the practical examples of that? We have to you know use our own constitution, and we have to be able to tell our lawmakers, you know, these are some of the things you need to do, yes, like the Sexual Harassment Act, many more need to be in place in that way. So yes, some, some things to do with the economy as a whole and there's some special steps to make uh, women feel good that they are part of the economic uh, mainstream, not, not feel that they have to be there because they have to just, you know, support their families, not just for that reason. I know that when, my, when I set up my first company 23, 24 years ago, Everybody assumed that my then husband owned it and that I was just running it. Or oh, that, that assumption was very, very common for women in business. But that has changed. That's one positive change that has come now. Now people are not going to assume automatically that there must be a male family member behind a woman's business. So yes, let's build on that. Thank you very much, Simi. This has been a very interesting debate and I think there's so much more that can still be asked but I'm going to be very kind <laughs> to all our participants here and the audience who's very patiently uh, kept pace with uh, our questions and our time. And we're coming to the close of this program, but definitely not the close of this struggle. As a matter of fact, this is the time when we reiterate our promise that we are going to continue to support the men and women who support women's movement, who support women's economic empowerment, who drive social change, who ensure political representation, who ensure there's a space, a voice for women. And we celebrate all of those who support us. Thank you very much. <laughs>